The extinct Dacian language was spoken in the Carpathian region in antiquity. In the first century, it was probably the predominant language of the ancient regions of Dacia and Mosia and possibly of some surrounding regions. The language was probably extinct by the 7th century. While there is unanimous agreement among scholars that Dacian was an Indo-European language, there are divergent opinions about its place within the IE family sad face. One, Dacian was a dialect of the extinct Thracian language, or vice versa, e. g. Baldi and Trask 2000, two, Dacian was a language distinct from Thracian but closely related to it, belonging to the same branch of the Indo-European family a Thraco-Dacian or Daco-Thracian branch has been theorized by some linguists. Three, Dacian, Thracian, the Baltic languages Juridanov also adds Pelasgian formed a distinct branch of Indo-European, e.g. Shawl 1974, Juridanov 1976, Radulescu 1987, and Mayer 1996. Four, the theory of Georgiev 1977, Daco Mosian was the ancestor of Albanian, belonging to a branch other than Thracian, but closely related to Thracian and distinct from Illyrian. The Dacian language is poorly documented documented. Unlike for Phrygian, which is documented by c. 200 inscriptions, only one Dacian inscription is believed to have survived. The Dacian names for a number of medicinal plants and herbs may survive in ancient literary texts, including about 60 plant names in Dioscorides. About 1,150 personal names and 900 toponyms may also be of Dacian origin. A few hundred words in modern Romanian and Albanian may have originated in ancient Balkan languages such as Dacian see list of Romanian words of possible Dacian origin. Linguists have reconstructed about 100 Dacian words from place names using established techniques of comparative linguistics, although only 20-25 such reconstructions had achieved wide acceptance by 1982. Topic. Origin. There is scholarly consensus that Dacian was a member of the Indo-European family of languages. These descended, according to the two leading theories of the expansion of IE languages, from a Proto-Indo-European tongue that originated in an Urheimat original homeland, in S. Russia, Caucasus region, Kurgan hypothesis, or in Central Anatolia, Anatolian hypothesis. According to both theories, Proto-IE reached the Carpathian region no later than c. 2500 BC. Supporters of both theories have suggested this region as IE's secondary or Heimat, in which the differentiation of Proto-IE into the various European language groups e.g. Italic, Germanic, Balto-Slavic, Celtic began. There is thus considerable support for the thesis that Dacian developed in the Carpathian region during the 3rd millennium BC, although its evolutionary pathways remains uncertain. According to one scenario, Proto Thracian populations emerged during the Bronze Age from the fusion of the indigenous Enneolithic population with the intruders of the transitional Indo Europeanization period. From these Proto Thracians, in the Iron Age, developed the Dacians, North Thracians of the Danubian Carpathian area on the one hand and the Thracians of the Eastern Balkan Peninsula on the other. According to Georgiev, the Dacian language was spread south of the Danube by tribes from Carpathia, who reached the Central Balkans in the period 2000 to 1000 BC, with further movements e the Tribali tribe after 1000 BC, until c. 300 BC. According to the ancient geographer Strabo, Daco Mosian was further spread into Asia Minor in the form of Mysian by a migration of the Mosi people. Strabo asserts that Mosi and Mysi were variants of the same name. Topic. Sources Many characteristics of the Dacian language are disputed or unknown. No lengthy texts in Dacian exist, only a few glosses and personal names in ancient Greek and Latin texts. No Dacian language inscriptions have been discovered, except some of names in the Latin or Greek alphabet. What is known about the language derives from Place names, river names and personal names, including the names of kings. The coin inscription Ko Sigma On may also be a personal name, of the king who issued the coin. The Dacian names of about 50 plants written in Greek and Roman sources see list of Dacian plant names. Etymologies have been established for only a few of them. Substratum words found in Romanian, the language that is spoken today in most of the region once occupied by Dacian speakers. These include about 400 words of uncertain origin. 
Romanian words for which a Dacian origin has been proposed include balaur, dragon, brenza, cheese, mal, bank, shore, strugure, grape. However, the value of the substratum words as a source for the Dacian language is limited because there is no certainty that these are of Dacian origin. This can be seen in the Dictionnaire Explicative al Limbi Roman, Dex, which shows multiple possible etymologies for most of the words. Many of the words may not be substratum at all, as Latin etymologies have been proposed for them. These are inherently more likely than a Dacian origin, as the Romanian language is descended from Latin, not Dacian, e.g., melc. Snail may derive from Latin limax, proto romance asterisk limus cf. It, lumaca, by metathesis of m with l. Some may derive from other little known ancient languages at some time spoken in Dacia or Mosia, for example, the Iranian Sarmatian, or the Turkic Pannonian Avar, Bulgar or Cuman languages, or, conceivably, some unknown pre Indo European languages of the Carpathians or Balkans. An illustration of the latter possibility are pre-Indo-European substratum i.e. Iberian, Basque in Spanish e.g. Fox equals Zorro, from Basque Azeri, instead of Proto-Romance asterisk Vulp. A pre-Indo-European origin has been proposed for several Romanian substratum words e.g. Balaur, Brad, Fir tree. About 160 of the Romanian substratum words have cognates in Albanian. A possible example is Romanian Brad. Fir tree, alb, cognate brad, same meaning. Juridanov has reconstructed asterisk skuya as a Dacian word for fir tree. The numerous Romanian substratum words which have cognates in Bulgarian may derive from Thracian, which may have been a different language from Dacian. See below Thracian, Balaur, dragon, ascribed a Dacian origin by some scholars, exemplifies the etymological uncertainties. According to Dex, Balaur has also been identified as, a pre-Indo-European relic, or derived from Latin Balua or Belwaria, beast, cf. it, Balva, or ancient Greek Palorian, monster, or as a cognate of Alb, Buliar, water snake. Dex argues that these etymologies, save the Albanian one, are dubious, but they are no more so than the unverifiable assertion that Balaur is derived from an unknown Dacian word. Another possibility is that Balaur could be a Celtic derivation cf. the Irish mythical giant Balor a.k.a. Balor, who could kill with flashes of light from his eye or with his poisonous breath. The substratum words have been used, in some cases, to corroborate Dacian words reconstructed from place and personal names e.g. Dacian asterisk Balas <laughs> White. From personal name Balius, Romanian Balin. White-haired. However, even in this case, it cannot be determined with certainty whether the Romanian word derives from the presumed Dacian word or from its old Slavic cognate Belu. Albanian, Bard. Geographical extent Linguistic area Dacian was probably one of the major languages of southeastern Europe, spoken in the area between the Danube, northern Carpathians, the Dniester River and the Balkans, and the Black Sea shore. According to historians, as a result of the linguistic unity of the Getae and Dacians that are found in the records of ancient writers Strabo, Cassius Dio, Trogus Pompeius, Appian and Pliny the Elder, contemporary historiography often uses the term Ghetto Dacians to refer to the people living in the area between the Carpathians, the Hemus Balkan Mountains, the Black Sea, Dniester River, Northern Carpathians, and Middle Danube. Strabo gave more specific information, recording that the Dacians speak the same language as the Getae, a dialect of the Thracian language. The information provided by the Greek geographer is complemented by other literary, linguistic, and archaeological evidence. According to these, the Ghetto Dacians have occupied territory in the west and northwest, as far as Moravia and the Middle Danube, to the area of present-day Serbia in the southwest, and as far as the Hemus Mountains Balkans in the south. 
The eastern limit of the territory inhabited by the Ghetto Dacians may have been the shore of the Black Sea and the Tyras River, D Nister, possibly at times reaching as far as the Bug River, the northern limit, including the Trans Carpathian westernmost Ukraine and southern Poland. Over time, some peripheral areas of the Ghetto Dacians' territories were affected by the presence of other people, such as the Celts in the west, the Illyrians in the southwest, the Greeks and Scythians in the east, and the Basterni in the northeast. Nevertheless, between the Danube River west, the Hemus Mountains s, the Black Sea e, the Dniester River ne, and the Northern Carpathians, a continuous ghetto Dacian presence's majority was permanently maintained, according to some scholars. According to the Bulgarian linguist Georgiev, the daco mysian region included Dacia approximately contemporary Romania and Hungary east of the Tissa River, Mysia Mosia, and Scythia Minor contemporary Dobrygia. Topic. Chronology Topic. First century BC In 53 BC, Julius Caesar stated that the lands of the Dacians started on the eastern edge of the Hercynian forest. This corresponds to the period between 82–44 BCE, when the Dacian state reached its widest extent during the reign of King Burabista. In the west it may have extended as far as the Middle Danube River Valley in present-day Hungary, in the east and north to the Carpathians in present-day Slovakia and in the south to the Lower Dniester Valley in present-day southwestern Ukraine and the western coast of the Black Sea as far as Apollonia. At that time, some scholars believe, the Dacians built a series of hill forts at Zemplin Slovakia, Mala Kapania Ukraine, Ancesti, Marimers Romania, and Solitvino Ukraine. The Zemplin settlement appears to belong to a Celto-Dacian horizon, as well as the river Patissus Tisa S region, including its upper stretch, according to Shukin 1989. According to Pardus 1956, Foltiny 1966, Dacian archaeological finds extend to the west of Dacia, and occur along both banks of the Tissa. Besides the possible incorporation of a part of Slovakia into the Dacian state of Burabista, there was also ghetto Dacian penetration of southeastern Poland, according to Milcarek 1989. The Polish linguist Milewski Tadeusz suggests that in the southern regions of Poland appear names that are unusual in northern Poland, possibly related to Dacian or Illyrian names. On the grounds of these names, it has been argued that the region of the Carpathian and Tatra Mountains was inhabited by Dacian tribes linguistically related to the ancestors of modern Albanians. Also, a formal statement by Pliny indicated the river Vistula as the western boundary of Dacia, according to Nicolette. 1991. Between the Prut and the Dniester, the northern extent of the appearance of ghetto Dacian elements in the 4th century BC coincides roughly with the extent of the present day Republic of Moldova, according to Milcharek. According to Mullenhoff 1856, Scutt 1917, Urbanchik 2001, and Matei Popescu 2007, Agrippa's commentaries mention the river Vistula as the western boundary of Dacia. Urbanchik 1997 speculates that according to Agrippa's commentaries and the map of Agrippa before 12 BC, the Vistula river separated Germania and Dacia. This map is lost and its contents are unknown however, later Roman geographers, including Ptolemy AD 90 c. AD 168 2.10, 3.7 and Tacitus AD 56 AD 117 ref, Germania XLVI considered the Vistula as the boundary between Germania and Sarmatia Europaea, or Germania and Scythia. 1st century AD Around 20 AD, Strabo wrote the Geographica that provides information regarding the extent of regions inhabited by the Dacians. On its basis, Langyell and Radon (1980), (1981), and Mountain (1998) consider that the Ghetto Dacians inhabited both sides of the Tissa River before the rise of the Celtic Boy, and again after the latter were defeated by the Dacians. The hold of the Dacians between the Danube and the Tissa appears to have been tenuous. However, the Hungarian archaeologist Pardus 1856 argued for a Dacian presence west of the Tissa dating from the time of Burabista. 
According to Tacitus AD 56 AD 117, Dacians were bordering Germany in the southeast while Sarmatians bordered it in the east. In the 1st century AD, the Eosigas settled in the west of Dacia, on the plain between the Danube and the Tissa rivers. According to some scholars' interpretation of Pliny's text, the higher parts between the Danube and the Hercynian forest, Black Forest, as far as the winter quarters of Pannonia at Carnuntum and the plains and level country of the German frontiers there are occupied by the Sarmatian Eosigas. Tigas, while the Dacians whom they have driven out hold the mountains and forests as far as the river Tice. Archaeological sources indicate that the local Celto-Dacian population retained its specificity as late as the 3rd century AD. Archaeological finds dated to the 2nd century AD, after the Roman conquest, indicate that during that period, vessels found in some of the Iosigian cemeteries reveal fairly strong Dacian influence, according to Moxie. M. Pardus and Z. Vizi reported a concentration of Dacian-style finds in the Chris Muresh Tissa region and in the Danube Bend area near Budapest. These maps of finds remain valid today, but they have been complemented with additional finds that cover a wider area, particularly the interfluvial region between the Danube and Tissa. However, this interpretation has been invalidated by late 20th century archaeology, which has discovered Sarmatian settlements and burial sites all over the Hungarian plain on both sides of the Tissa e.g. Gioma in southeastern Hungary and Nirejahaza in northeastern Hungary. The Barrington Atlas shows the Eosigas occupying both sides of Tissa map 20. Topic. Second century AD. Written a few decades after the Roman conquest of Dacia 105–106 AD, Ptolemy Geographia defined the boundaries of Dacia. There is a consensus among scholars that Ptolemy Dacia was the region between the rivers Tissa, Danube, Upper Dniester, and Siret. The mainstream of historians accepted this interpretation. Avery, 1972; Berenger, 1994; Foll, 1996; Mountain, 1998; Waldman Mason, 2006. Ptolemy also provided Dacian toponyms in the Upper Vistula Polish, Wisła River Basin in Poland, Susudava and Sedidava with a manuscript variant Getidava. This may be an echo of Burabista's expansion. It appears that this northern expansion of the Dacian language as far as the Vistula River lasted until AD 170-180 when the Hasdings, a Germanic tribe, expelled a Dacian group from this region, according to Scut 1917 and Childe 1930. This Dacian group is associated by Scut 1952 with towns having the specific Dacian language ending Dava i.e. Sedidava. A previous Dacian presence that ended with the Hasdings' arrival is considered also by Heather 2010 who says that the Hasdings' vandals attempted to take control of lands which had previously belonged to a free Dacian group called the Kostobochi. Several tribes on the northern slopes of the Carpathians were mentioned that are generally considered Thraco-Dacian, i.e. Arcite Upper Vistula, BC, Biswa and Pingatai. Scut 1952 associated the Dacian tribe of Arcite with the Arsenian town. The ancient documents attest names with the Dacian name ending Dava town in the Balto-Slavic territory, in the country of Arcite tribe, at the sources of the Vistula River. The BC inhabited the foothills of the Carpathian Mountains, which on Ptolemy map are located on the headwaters of the D. Nister and Shan rivers, the right bank Carpathian tributary of the Vistula River. The BC probably left their name to the mountain chain of Biscids that continues the Carpathian Mountains towards the north Ptolemy 140 AD lists only Germanic or Balto-Slavic tribes, and no Dacians, on both sides of the Vistula ref. 2.10, 3.7, as does the Barrington Atlas map 19. .After the Marcomannic Wars 166-180 AD, Dacian groups from outside Roman Dacia had been set in motion, and thus were the 12,000 Dacians, "...from the neighborhood of Roman Dacia sent away from their own country." Their native country could have been the Upper Tissa region but other places cannot be excluded. Dacian linguistic zone in the early Roman Imperial era 30 BC, AD 100. Historical linguistic overview Mainstream scholarship believes the Dacian language had become established as the predominant language north of the Danube in Dacia well before 1000 BC and south of the river, in Mosia, before 500 BC. 
Starting around 400 BC, Celtic groups, moving out of their Latine cultural heartland in southern Germany, eastern Gaul, penetrated and settled southeastern Europe as far as the Black Sea and into Anatolia. By c. 250 BC, much of the modern states of Austria, Slovakia, Hungary and Romania, and Bessarabia and Mosia, were under Celtic cultural influence and probably political domination in many regions. This migratory process brought Celtic material culture, especially advanced in metallurgy, to the Illyrian and Dacian tribes. Especially intensive Celtic settlement, as evidenced by concentrations of Latine type cemeteries, took place in Austria, Slovakia, the Hungarian Plain, Transylvania, Bessarabia, and eastern Thrace. Central Transylvania appears to have become a Celtic enclave or unitary kingdom, according to Batty. It is likely that during the period of Celtic pre eminence, the Dacian language was eclipsed by Celtic dialects in Transylvania. In Mosia, south of the Danube, there was also extensive Celticization. An example is the Scordici tribe of Mosia Superior, reported by the ancient historian Livy to be Celtic-speaking and whose culture displays Celtic features. By 60 BC, Celtic political hegemony in the region appears to have collapsed, and the indigenous Dacian tribes throughout the region appear to have reasserted their identity and political independence. This process may have been partly due to the career of the Getan king Burabista ruled ca BC, who appears to have coalesced several Getic and Dacian tribes under his leadership. It is likely that in this period, the Dacian language regained its former predominance in Transylvania. In 29–26 BC, Mosia was conquered and annexed by the Romans. There followed an intensive process of Romanization. The Danube, as the new frontier of the empire and main fluvial supply route for the Roman military, was soon dotted with forts and supply depots, which were garrisoned by several legions and many auxiliary units. Numerous colonies of Roman army veterans were established. The presence of the Roman military resulted in a huge influx of non-Dacian immigrants, such as soldiers, their dependents, ancillary workers and merchants, from every part of the Roman Empire, especially from the rest of the Balkans, into Mosia. It is likely that by the time the Emperor Trajan invaded Dacia 101-6, the Dacian language had been largely replaced by Latin in Mosia. The conquest of Dacia saw a similar process of Romanization north of the Danube, so that by AD 200, Latin was probably predominant in the zone permanently occupied by the Romans. In addition, it appears that some unoccupied parts of the Dava zone were overrun, either before or during the Dacian Wars, by Sarmatian tribes, for example, eastern Wallachia, which had fallen under the Roxolani by AD 68. By around 200 AD, it is likely that the Dacian language was confined to those parts of the Dava zone occupied by the Free Dacian groups, which may have amounted to little more than the eastern Carpathians. Under the Emperor Aurelian R. the Romans withdrew their administration and armed forces, and possibly a significant proportion of the provincial population, from the part of Dacia they ruled. The subsequent linguistic status of this region is disputed. Traditional Romanian historiography maintains that a Latin-speaking population persisted into medieval times, to form the basis of today's Romanian-speaking inhabitants. But this hypothesis lacks evidential basis e.g. the absence of any post-275 Latin inscriptions in the region, other than on imported Roman coins, artifacts. What is certain is that by AD 300, the entire North Danubian region had fallen under the political domination of Germanic-speaking groups, a hegemony that continued until c. AD 500, the Goths held overall hegemony, and under them, lesser Germanic tribes such as the Typhali and Gepids. Some historians consider that the region became Germanic-speaking during this period. At least one part, Wallachia, may have become Slavic-speaking by AD 600, as it is routinely referred to Sklavinia Greek for land of the Slavs, by contemporary Byzantine chroniclers. The survival of the Dacian language in this period is impossible to determine, due to a complete lack of documentation. However, it is generally believed that the language was extinct by AD 600. Topic. Dacia and Mosia, zone of toponyms ending in Dava At the start of the Roman imperial era 30 BC, the Dacian language was probably predominant in the ancient regions of Dacia and Mosia although these regions probably contained several enclaves of Celtic and Germanic speakers. 
Strabo's statement that the Mosian people spoke the same language as the Dacians and Getae is consistent with the distribution of place names, attested in Ptolemy Geographia, which carry the Dacian suffix dava town", or fort". North of the Danube, the Dava zone is largely consistent with Ptolemy definition of Dacia's borders 3.8.1-3 i.e. the area contained by the river Ister Danube to the south, the river Thibiscum to the west, the upper river Tyras to the north and the river Hyrasis to the east. To the west, it appears that the Dava place names in Ultianu's map lie within the line of the Timis, extended northwards. However, four Davas are located beyond the Siret Ptolemy eastern border. But three of these, Piroborodava, Tamasadava and Zargadava, are described by Ptolemy as para gr. very close. To the Siret, Piroborodava, the only one securely located, was three kilometers from the Siret. The location of Klepadava is uncertain, Ultianu locates it in northeast Bessarabia, but Georgiev places it further west, in southwest Ukraine, between the upper reaches of the Siret and Dniester rivers, south of the Danube. A dialect of Dacian called Daco Mosian was probably predominant in the region known to the Romans as Mosia, which was divided by them into the Roman provinces of Mosia Superior roughly modern Serbia and Mosia Inferior modern northern Bulgaria as far as the Balkan Range plus Roman Dobruja region. This is evidenced by the distribution of Dava place names, which occur in the eastern half of Mosia Superior and all over Inferior. These regions were inhabited predominantly by tribes believed to have been Dacian speaking, such as the Tribali, Mosi, and Gete. However, the Dava zone was not exclusively or uniformly Dacian speaking during historical times. Significant Celtic elements survived there into the 2nd century AD. Ptolemy 3.8.3 lists two Celtic peoples, the Taurishi and Anarts, as resident in the northernmost part of Dacia, in the northern Carpathians. The partly Celtic Bastarnae are also attested in this region in literature and the archaeological record during the 1st century BC. They probably remained in the 1st century AD, according to Badi. Topic: Other regions. It has been argued that the zone of Dacian speech extended beyond the confines of Dacia, as defined by Ptolemy, and Mosia. An extreme view, presented by some scholars, is that Dacian was the main language spoken between the Baltic Sea and the Black and Aegean Seas. But the evidence for Dacian as a prevalent language outside Dacia and Mosia appears inconclusive. Bessarabia to the east, beyond the Siret River, it has been argued by numerous scholars that Dacian was also the main language of the modern regions of Moldavia and Bessarabia, at least as far east as the river Dniester. The main evidence used to support this hypothesis consists of three Dava place names which Ptolemy located just east of the Siret, and the mainstream identification as ethnic Dacian of two peoples resident in Moldavia, the Karpai and Kostobochi. However, the Dacian ethnicity of the Karpai and Kostobochi is disputed in academic circles, and they have also been variously identified as Sarmatian, Germanic, Celtic or Proto-Slavic. Numerous non-Dacian peoples, both sedentary and nomadic, the Scytho-Sarmatian Roxolani and Agathersi, Germanic, Celtic Bastarnae and Celtic Anarts, are attested to in the ancient sources and in the archaeological record as inhabiting this region. The linguistic status of this region during the Roman era must therefore be considered uncertain. It is likely that a great variety of languages were spoken. If there was a lingua franca spoken by all inhabitants of the region, it was not necessarily Dacian, it could as likely have been Celtic or Germanic or Sarmatian. <laughs> Balkans to the south, it has been argued that the ancient Thracian language was a dialect of Dacian, or vice versa, and that therefore the Dacian linguistic zone extended over the Roman province of Thracia, occupying modern-day Bulgaria south of the Balkan Mountains, northern Greece and European Turkey, as far as the Aegean Sea. But this theory, based on the testimony of the Augustan-era geographer Strabo's work Geographica 7.3.2 and 3.13, is disputed. Opponents argue that Thracian was a distinct language from Dacian, either related or unrelated. See relationship with Thracian, below, for a detailed discussion of this issue. <laughs> Anatolia 
According to some ancient sources, notably Strabo, the northwestern section of the Anatolian Peninsula, namely the ancient regions of Bithynia, Phrygia and Mysia, were occupied by tribes of Thracian or Dacian origin and thus spoke dialects of the Thracian or Dacian languages which, Strabo claimed, were in turn closely related. However, the link between Dacian and Thracian has been disputed by some scholars, as has the link between these two languages and Phrygian. According to Strabo and Herodotus, the people of Bithynia in northwest Anatolia originated from two Thracian tribes, the Bithyni and Thyni, which migrated from their original home around the river Strymon in Thrace. Therefore, they spoke the Thracian language. In addition, Strabo claims that the neighboring Phrygians were also descended from a Thracian tribe, the Bridges, and spoke a language similar to Thracian. In fact, it has been established that both Bithynians and Phrygians spoke the Phrygian language. Phrygian is better documented than Thracian and Dacian, as some 200 inscriptions in the language survive. Study of these has led mainstream opinion to accept the observation of the ancient Greek philosopher Plato that Phrygian showed strong affinities to Greek. Georgiev argued in one article that Phrygian originally belonged to the same IE branch as Greek and ancient Macedonian which did not include Thracian or Dacian, but later adopted the view that Phrygian constituted a separate branch of Indo-European, also unrelated to Thracian or Dacian. This position is currently favored by mainstream scholarship. In addition, Strabo equates the Mosi people of the Danubian basin with the Mysi, neighbors of the Phrygians in NW Anatolia, stating that the two forms were Greek and Latin variants of the same name. The Mysians, he adds, were Mosi who had migrated to Anatolia and also spoke the Dacian language. Georgiev accepts Strabo's statement, dubbing the language of the Mosi, Daco Mysian. However, there is insufficient evidence about either Dacian or the Mysian language, both of which are virtually undocumented, to verify Strabo's claim. It is possible that Strabo made a false identification based solely on the similarity between the two tribal names, which may have been coincidental. <laughs> Hungarian plain the hypothesis that Dacian was widely spoken to the northwest of Dacia is primarily based on the career of Dacian king Burabista, who ruled approximately between 8044 BC. According to Strabo, Burabista coalesced the ghetto Dacian tribes under his leadership and conducted military operations as far as Pannonia and Thracia. Although Strabo appears to portray these campaigns as short-term raids for plunder and to punish his enemies, several Romanian scholars have argued, on the basis of controversial interpretation of archaeological data, that they resulted in longer-term Dacian occupation and settlement of large territories beyond the Dava zone. Some scholars have asserted that Dacian was the main language of the sedentary population of the Hungarian plain, at least as far as the river Tissa, and possibly as far as the Danube. Statements by ancient authors such as Caesar, Strabo and Pliny the Elder have been controversially interpreted as supporting this view, but these are too vague or ambiguous to be of much geographical value. There is little hard evidence to support the thesis of a large ethnic Dacian population on the plain. Toponyms, Ptolemy provides eight placenames for the territory of the Eosigas Metaniste i.e. the Hungarian plain. None of these carry the Dacian Dava suffix. At least three Eusinum, Bormanum and the only one which can be located with confidence, Partiscum Seged, Hungary, have been identified as Celtic placenames by scholars. Archaeology, concentrations of Latine type cemeteries suggest that the Hungarian plain was the scene of heavy Celtic immigration and settlement in the period 400-260 BC see above. During the period 100 BC, AD 100, the archaeology of the sedentary population of the plain has been interpreted by some dated scholars as showing Dacian or Celto-Dacian features. However, surveys of the results of excavations using modern scientific methods, e.g. Zabo and Almasi favor the view that the sedentary population of the Hungarian plain in this period was predominantly Celtic and that any Dacian-style features were probably the results of trade. Of 94 contemporaneous sites excavated between 1986–2006, the vast majority have been identified as probably Celtic, while only two as possibly Dacian, according to Almasi, who personally excavated some of the sites. Almasi concludes. 
In the Great Hungarian Plain, we have to count on a sporadic Celtic village network in which the Celtic inhabitants lived mixed with the people of the Scythian Age referring to traces of an influx of Scythians during the 1st century BC, that could have continued into the late Celtic period without significant changes. This system consisted of small, farm-like settlements interspersed with a few relatively large villages. In the 1st century AD nothing refers to a significant immigration of Dacian people. 2 1995 concurs that there is little archaeological evidence of a Dacian population on the plain before its occupation by the Sarmatians in the late 1st century AD. Epigraphy, inscription A1905-14 records a campaign on the Hungarian plain by the Augustan-era general Marcus Vinucius, dated to 10 BC or 8 BC IE. During or just after the Roman conquest of Pannonia Bellum Pannonicum 14-9 BC, in which Vinucius played a leading role as governor of the neighboring Roman province of Illyricum. The inscription states, Marcus Vinucius Patronymic, consul in 19 BC Various official titles, governor of Illyricum, the first Roman general to advance across the river Danube, defeated in battle and routed an army of Dacians and Basternae, and subjugated the Cotini, Osi missing tribal name and anarchy to the power of the Emperor Augustus and of the people of Rome. Three, the inscription suggests that the population of the Hungarian plain retained their Celtic character in the time of Augustus. The scholarly consensus is that the Cotini and Anarts were Celtic tribes and the OSI either Celts or Celticized Illyrians. Topic. Slovakia To the northwest, the argument has been advanced that Dacian was also prevalent in modern day Slovakia and parts of Poland. The basis for this is the presumed Dacian occupation of the fortress of Zemplin in Slovakia in the era of Dacian King Burabista, whose campaigns outside Dacia have been dated c. 60 44 BC, and Ptolemy's location of two Dava placenames on the lower Vistula River in Poland. The hypothesis of a Dacian occupation of Slovakia during the 1st century BC is contradicted by the archaeological evidence that this region featured a predominantly Celtic culture from c. 400 BC, and a sophisticated kingdom of the Boy Celtic tribe. Based in modern-day Bratislava during the 1st century BC, this polity issued its own gold and silver coinage the so-called Biotech type coins, which bear the names of several kings with recognized Celtic names. This kingdom is also evidenced by numerous Celtic-type fortified hill-top settlements Opida, of which Zemplin is the foremost example in southeast Slovakia. Furthermore, the archaeological Puchov culture, present in Slovakia in this period, is considered Celtic by mainstream scholars. Some scholars argue that Zemplin was occupied by Burabista's warriors from about 60 BC onwards, but this is based on the presence of Dacian-style artifacts alongside the Celtic ones, which may simply have been cultural imports. But even if occupation by Dacian troops under Burabista actually occurred, it would probably have been brief, as in 44 BC Burabista died and his kingdom collapsed and split into four fragments. In any case, it does not follow that the indigenous population became Dacian speakers during the period of Dacian control. Carol Pieta's discussion of the ethnicity of the Puchov people shows that opinion is divided between those who attribute the culture to a Celtic group, the Boi or Cotini are the leading candidates, and those who favor a Germanic group e.g. the Buri. Despite wide acknowledgement of Dacian influence, there is little support for the view that the people of this region were ethnic Dacians. Topic. Poland the hypothesis of a substantial Dacian population in the river Vistula Basin is not widely supported among modern scholars, as this region is generally regarded as inhabited predominantly by Germanic tribes during the Roman Imperial era e.g. Heather 2009. <laughs> Dacian vocabulary <laughs> Place names Ptolemy gives a list of 43 names of towns in Dacia, out of which arguably 33 were of Dacian origin. Most of the latter included the suffix dava, meaning settlement or village. 
but other Dacian names from his list lack the suffix, for example Zermisegathusa regia equals Zermiserga, and nine other names of Dacian origin seem to have been Latinized. The Dacian linguistic area is characterized mainly with composite names ending in Dava, or variations such as Diva, Dawa, Daba, etc. The settlement names ending in these suffixes are geographically grouped as follows, in Dacia, Asadava, Argadava, Argadava, Baridava, Kumadava, Dokadawa, Karsidavi, Klepadawa, Markadawa, Netandawa, Patridavi, Pelindova, Asterisk Perbaridava, Petradawa, Pirobaridavi, Ramadawa, Rusadava, Sasadava, Sangidawa, Sedidava, Singadawa, Saikadava, Tamasidavi, Udadawa, Zargadawa, Ziradava, Zuchadawa 26 names altogether. In Lower Mosia, the present northern Bulgaria, and Scythia Minor, Dobruja, Adabi, Asterisk Buteridava, Asterisk Giridava, Dostevua, Kapadawa, Muridava, Sasadava, Skadava, Skadava, Sagadava, Sukadava, Susadava, ten names in total. In Upper Mosia, the present districts of Nish, Sofia, and partly K. Justandil, Ayadaba, Bregadaba, Dandabai, Desudaba, Itadeba, Kuimadaba, Ziznudeba, seven names in total. Besides these regions, similar village names are found in three other places Thermi Dawa, Ptolemy, a town in Dalmatia, a Gresized form of asterisk Germadava. This settlement was probably founded by immigrants from Dacia. Gil Doba, a village in Thrace, of unknown location. Pulpu Diva in Thrace, today Plovdiv in Bulgaria, a number of Dacian settlements do not have the Dava ending or variant suffix. Some of these are, A.C. Monia, Aziz, Amutria, Apulin, Arsina, Arkabadara, Aratella, Berzobis, Brukla, Diakum, Dierna, Dinagedia, Drobeda, Ajita, Genukla, Malva, Romula, Napoca, Oescus, Petruisa, Pinan, Potisa, Ratiaria, Sarmizagetusa, Tapai, Tibiscum, Tirista, Sierna, Tyrida, Zaldapa, Zugma and Zurabara. Topic tribal names In the case of Ptolemy Dacia, most of the tribal names are similar to those on the list of civitates, with few exceptions. Georgiev counts the Tribali, the Mosians and the Dardanians as Daco-Mosians. Topic plant names In ancient literary sources, the Dacian names for a number of medicinal plants and herbs survive in ancient texts, including about 60 plant names in Dioscorides. The Greek physician Padanius Dioscorides, of Anazarbus in Asia Minor, wrote the medical textbook De Materia Medica gr. Perry Wiles Iatrikes in the mid-first century AD. In Wellman's opinion 1913, accepted by Rusu 1967, the Dacian plant names were added in the 3rd century AD from a glossary published by the Greek grammarian Pamphilus of Alexandria 1st century AD. The Dacian glosses were probably added to the pseudo apuleius texts by the 4th century. The mixture of indigenous Dacian, Latin and Greek words in the lists of Dacian plant names may be explained by a linguistic crossing process occurring in that period. Although many Dacian toponyms have uncertain meanings, they are more reliable as sources of Dacian words than the names of medicinal plants provided by Dioscorides, which have led to speculative identifications. Out of 57 plants, 25 identifications may be erroneous, according to Asher and Simpson. According to the Bulgarian linguist Decev, of the 42 supposedly Dacian plant names in Dioscorides only 25 are truly Dacian, while 10 are Latin and 7 Greek. Also, of the 31 Dacian plant names recorded by pseudo Apuleius, 16 are really Dacian, 9 are Latin and 8 are Greek. Examples of common Dacian, Latin and Greek words in pseudo Apuleius, Dacian bliss and Latin blitum from Greek blighton for purple amaranth Dacian amalusta and Campanian amalocha for chamomile Dacian dracontos and italic dracontes for rosemary. Topic reconstruction of Dacian words Both Georgiev and Duridanov use the comparative linguistic method to decipher ancient Thracian and Dacian names, respectively. Georgiev 1977 argues that the meaning of an ancient placename in an unknown language can be deciphered by comparing it to its successor names and to cognate placenames and words in other Indo-European languages, both ancient and modern. Georgiev considers decipherment by analysis of root words alone to be devoid of scientific value. He gives several examples of his methodology, one of which refers to a town and river a tributary of the Danube in eastern Romania called Cernavoda, which in Slavic means, black water. The same town in antiquity was known as Axiopa or Axiopolis and its river is the Axios The working assumption is that Axiopa meant, black water, in Dacian, on the basis that Cernavoda is probably a calque of the ancient Dacian name. 
According to Georgiev, the likely IE root word for axios is asterisk and case e y no dark black cf avestan axina. On the basis of the known rules of formation of IE composite words, axiopa would break down as axi. Topic. Black. An OPA or UPA. Water. In Dacian, the polis element is ignored, as it is a Greek suffix meaning city. The assumption is then validated by examining cognate placenames. There was another Balkan river also known in antiquity as Axios, whose source was in the Dacian speaking region of Mosia. Its modern Macedonian name is Crna Reka, Slavic for Black River. Although it was in Dardania Rep. of Macedonia, a mainly Illyrian-speaking region. Georgiev considers this river name to be of daco mosian origin. The Axi element is also validated by the older Greek name for the Black Sea, Axinos Pontos Axinos Pontos, later altered to the euphemism Euxinos Pontos Euxinos Pontos meaning, hospitable sea. The OPA, UPA element is validated by the Lithuanian cognate Eup, or Romanian, Apa, meaning, water. The second component of the town's name asterisk upolis may be a diminutive of asterisk upa cf. Lithuanian diminutive upolis, nb. This etymology was questioned by Rusu. Axiopa, a name attested to only in Procopius de Aedificis, may be a corrupted form of Axiopolis. However, even if correct, Rusu's objection is irrelevant, it does not affect the interpretation of the axi element as meaning black or the upa as meaning water. Cf. Placename Sinopa. Fraser 1959 noted that the root axio that occurs in the place name Axiopa is also found in Samothrace and in Sparta, where Athena Axiopoina was worshipped. Therefore, he considers this pre-Greek root to be of Thracian origin, meaning, great. However, there is no certainty that the axi element in Greece was of Thracian as opposed to Greek or other language, or that it meant, great, rather than, black. In any case, this objection may not be relevant, if Thracian was a separate language to Dacian. Some linguists are skeptical of this reconstruction methodology of Dacian. The phonetic systems of Dacian and Thracian and their evolution are not reconstructed directly from indigenous elements but from their approximative Greek or Latin transcripts. Greek and Latin had no dedicated graphic signs for phonemes such as C, G, Z, S and others. Thus, if a Thracian or Dacian word contained such a phoneme, a Greek or Latin transcript would not represent it accurately. The etymologies that are adduced to back up the proposed Dacian and Thracian vowel and consonant changes, used for word reconstruction with the comparative method, are open to divergent interpretations because the material is related to place names, with the exception of Dacian plant names and the limited number of glosses. Because of this, there are divergent and even contradictory assumptions for the phonological structure and development of the Dacian and Thracian languages. It is doubtful that the Dacian phonological system has been accurately reproduced by Greek or Latin transcripts of indigenous lexica. In the case of personal names, the choice of the etymology is often a matter of compliance with assumed phonological rules. Since the geographical aspect of the occurrence of sound changes i.e. O greater than O within Thracian territory, based on the work of V. Georgiev, began to be emphasized by some researchers, the chronological aspect has been somewhat neglected. There are numerous cases where lack of information has obscured the vocalism of these idioms, generating the most contradictory theories. Today, some 3,000 Thraco-Dacian lexical units are known. In the case of the oscillation asterisk o, asterisk a, the total number of words containing it is about 30, many more than the ones cited by both Georgiev and Rusu, and the same explanation is not valid for all of them. Topic. Sound changes from Proto-Indo-European Phonologically Dacian is a conservative Indo-European language. From the remaining fragments, the sound changes from Proto-Indo-European to Dacian can be grouped as follows. Topic. Short vowels. Pi asterisk a and asterisk o appear as a. Pi accented asterisk e appears as ye in open syllable or ya in closed ones. Otherwise, pi unaccented asterisk e remains e. Pi asterisk I was preserved in Dacian as I. Topic: Long vowels. 
Pi asterisk e and asterisk o appear as asterisk a. Pi asterisk o was preserved as asterisk o. Topic. Diphthongs. Pi asterisk i was preserved as asterisk i. Pi asterisk oi appears in Dacian as asterisk i. Pi asterisk a evolution is not well reconstructed yet. It appears to be preserved to a or that already passed to i. Pi asterisk wa was preserved as asterisk wa. Pi asterisk wo appears as asterisk wa. Pi asterisk we was preserved as asterisk we. Pi asterisk we appears as asterisk v. Pi asterisk a was preserved as asterisk a. Pi asterisk ao appears as asterisk a. Pi asterisk eu was preserved as asterisk eu. Topic: Consonants. Like many IE stocks, Dacian merged the two series of voiced stops. Both asterisk d and asterisk dh became d. Both asterisk g and asterisk gh became g. Both asterisk b and asterisk bh became b. Pi asterisk k became ts. Pi asterisk g became dz. Pi asterisk k when followed by e, i became t. Otherwise became k. Same fate for pi cluster asterisk kw. Pi asterisk g and asterisk gh when followed by e or i became d. Otherwise became to g. Same fate for pi cluster asterisk gw. Pi asterisk m, asterisk n, asterisk p, asterisk r, asterisk l were preserved. Note, in the course of the diachronic development of Dacian, a palatalization of k and g appears to have occurred before front vowels according to the following process. K greater than K J greater than T J greater than T tilde T S T S or T Z greater than S tilde Z Z E G asterisk cur S na is reflected by Tirna tabula pudingeriana Dierna in inscriptions and Ptolemy asterisk Cierna in station Cierna Cis A D 157 Zernai Notitia dignitatum Colonia Zernensis Alpian G greater than J greater than D J greater than D Z tilde Z Z E G. Germasara appears as Germasara with the variants Zermizerga. Zermizerga topic. Linguistic classification. Dacian was an Indo-European language, i.e., Rusu 1967, 1969 and 1970 suggested that its phonological system, and therefore that of its presumed Thraco-Dacian parent language, was relatively close to the primitive IE system. Several linguists classify Dacian as a Satim IE language, Rusu, Radulescu 1987, Katachik 1976, and Kriesman 1976. In Crossland's opinion 1982, both Thracian and Dacian feature one of the main Satim characteristics, the change of Indo-European asterisk K and asterisk G to S and Z. But the other characteristic Satim changes are doubtful in Thracian and are not evidenced in Dacian. In any case, the satim centum distinction, once regarded as a fundamental division between IE languages, is no longer considered as important in historical linguistics by mainstream scholars. It is now recognized that it is only one of many isoglosses in the IE zone, that languages can exhibit both types at the same time, and that these may change over time within a particular language. There is much controversy about the place of Dacian in the IE evolutionary tree. According to a dated view, Dacian derived from a Daco-Thraco-Phrygian or Paleo-Balkan branch of IE. Today, the Phrygian is no longer widely seen as linked in this way to Dacian and Thracian. In contrast, the hypothesis of a Thraco Dacian or Daco Thracian branch of IE, indicating a close link between the Thracian and Dacian languages, has numerous adherents, including Rusu 1967, Georg Solta 1980, Vrashu 1980, Crossland 1982, Radulescu 1984, 1987, Mihailov and Trask 2000. The Daco-Thracian theory is ultimately based on the testimony of several Greco-Roman authors, most notably the Roman imperial era historian and geographer Strabo, who states that the Dacians, Getae, Mosians and Thracians all spoke the same language. Herodotus states that, "...the Getae are the bravest and the most just amongst the Thracians," linking the Getae, and thus the Dacians, with the Thracians. 
Some scholars also see support for a close link between the Thracian and Dacian languages in the works of Cassius Dio, Trogus Pompeius, Appian and Pliny the Elder, but the Daco-Thracian theory has been challenged since the 1960s by the Bulgarian linguist Vladimir I Georgiev and his followers. Georgiev argues, on phonetic, lexical and toponymic grounds, that Thracian, Dacian and Phrygian were completely different languages, each a separate branch of IE, and that no Daco-Thraco-Phrygian or Daco-Thracian branches of IE ever existed. Georgiev argues that the distance between Dacian and Thracian was approximately the same as that between the Armenian and Persian languages, which are completely different languages. In elaborating the phonology of Dacian, Georgiev uses plant names attested to in Dioscorides and pseudo apuleius ascertaining their literal meanings, and hence their etymology, using the Greek translations provided by those authors. The phonology of Dacian produced in this way is very different from that of Thracian. The vowel change i.e. asterisk o greater than asterisk a recurs and the k sounds undergo the changes characteristic of the Satim languages. For the phonology of Thracian, Georgiev uses the principle that an intelligible placename in a modern language is likely to be a translation of an ancient name. Georgiev 1977 also argues that the modern Albanian language is descended from Dacian, specifically from what he called Daco Mosian or Daco Mysian, the Mosian dialect of Dacian, but this view has not gained wide acceptance among scholars and is rejected by most Albanian linguists, who consider that Albanian belongs to the Illyrian branch of i.e. Ref. Loshi, 1999, p. 283. Polame accepts the view that Albanian is descended from Illyrian but considers the evidence inconclusive. Topic. Relationship with ancient languages Topic. Thracian There is general agreement among scholars that Dacian and Thracian were Indo-European languages, however, widely divergent views exist about their relationship. Dacian was a northern dialect or a slightly distinct variety of the Thracian language. Alternatively, Thracian was a southern dialect of Dacian which developed relatively late. Linguists use the term Daco-Thracian or Thraco-Dacian to denote this presumed Dacian and Thracian common language. On this view, these dialects may have possessed a high degree of mutual intelligibility. Dacian and Thracian were distinct but related languages, descended from a hypothetical Daco-Thracian branch of Indo-European. One suggestion is that the Dacian differentiation from Thracian may have taken place after 1500 BC. In this scenario, the two languages may have possessed only limited mutual intelligibility. Dacian and Thracian were related, constituting separate branches of IE. However, they shared a large number of words, which were mutual borrowings due to long-term geographical proximity. Nevertheless, they would not have been mutually intelligible. Georgiev 1977 and Duridanov 1985 argue that the phonetic development from Proto-Indo-European of the two languages was clearly divergent. Note, asterisk indicates reconstructed IE sound. M is a cover symbol for the row of voiced stops T for unvoiced stops tenues, and TA for aspirated stops tenues aspirate. Capital O is O, A0 symbol no sound, when the sound has been dropped. Georgiev and Duridanov argue that the phonetic divergences above prove that the Dacian and Thracian and Phrygian, per Georgiev, languages could not have descended from the same branch of Indo-European, but must have constituted separate, standalone branches. However, the validity of this conclusion has been challenged due to a fundamental weakness in the source material for sound change reconstruction. Since the ancient Balkan languages never developed their own alphabets, ancient Balkan linguistic elements mainly place names and personal names are known only through their Greek or Latin transcripts. These may not accurately reproduce the indigenous sounds e.g. Greek and Latin had no dedicated graphic signs for phonemes such as c, g, z, s and others. Thus, if a Thracian or Dacian word contained such a phoneme, a Greek or Latin transcript would not represent it accurately. Because of this, there are divergent and even contradictory assumptions for the phonological structure and development of the Dacian and Thracian languages. This can be seen from the different sound changes proposed by Georgiev and Duridanov, reproduced above, even though these scholars agree that Thracian and Dacian were different languages. Also, some sound changes proposed by Georgiev have been disputed e.g. that i.e. asterisk t became Thracian ta, and asterisk m equals t. It has been argued that in both languages i.e. asterisk ma fused into m and that asterisk t remained unchanged. 
Georgiev's claim that IE O mutated into A in Thracian, has been disputed by Rusu. A comparison of Georgiev's and Duridanov's reconstructed words with the same meaning in the two languages shows that, although they shared some words, many words were different. However, even if such reconstructions are accepted as valid, an insufficient quantity of words have been reconstructed in each language to establish that they were unrelated. According to Georgiev, 1977, Dacian placenames and personal names are completely different from their Thracian counterparts. However, Tomaschik and Matiescu argue that some common elements exist in Dacian and Thracian placenames and personal names. But Polamay considered that research had, by 1982, confirmed Georgiev's claim of a clear onomastic divide between Thrace and Moja, Dacia. Georgiev highlighted a striking divergence between placename suffixes in Dacia, Moja, and Thrace. Daco Mosian placenames generally carry the suffix dava, variants, daba, diva, meaning town or stronghold. But placenames in Thrace proper, i.e., south of the Balkan Mountains, commonly end in para or para, meaning village. Or settlement. Cf. Sanskrit pura. Topic. Town, from which derives Hindi town suffix pure, e.g. Udaipur. City of Uday. Map showing Dava para divide Georgiev argues that such toponymic divergence renders the notion that Thracian and Dacian were the same language implausible. However, this thesis has been challenged on a number of grounds. Papazoglu and Tachova reject the argument that such different placename suffixes imply different languages although, in general historical linguistics, changes in placename suffixes are regarded as potentially strong evidence of changes in prevalent language. A possible objection is that, in two regions of Thrace, para is not the standard suffix. In Ne Thrace, placenames commonly end in Bria. Town, while in Se Thrace, Diza, Dizos, stronghold, is the most common ending. Following Georgiev's logic, this would indicate that these regions spoke a language different from Thracian. It is possible that this was the case. Ne Thrace, for example, was a region of intensive Celtic settlement and may, therefore, have retained Celtic speech into Roman imperial times. If, on the other hand, the different endings were due simply to Thracian regional dialectal variations, the same could be true of the Dava para divide. Papazoglu and Fisher point out that two Dava placenames are found in Thrace proper, in contravention of Georgiev's placename divide, Pulpudeva and Desudaba. However, according to Georgiev 1977, east of a line formed by the Nestos and Ukyur rivers, the traditional western boundary of Thrace proper, Pulpudeva is the only known Dava-type placename, and Georgiev argues that it is not linguistically significant, as it was an extraneous and late foundation by the Macedonian king Philip II and its Dava name a Mosian import. The Dava – Para divide appears to break down west of the Nestos Ukyur line, where Dava placenames, including Desudaba, are intermingled with Para names. However, this does not necessarily invalidate Georgiev's thesis, as this region was the border zone between the Roman provinces of Mosia Superior and Thracia, and the mixed placename suffixes may reflect a mixed Thracian Mosian population. Georgiev's thesis has by no means achieved general acceptance. The Thraco Dacian theory retains substantial support among linguists. Crossland 1982 considers that the divergence of a presumed original Thraco-Dacian language into northern and southern groups of dialects is not so significant as to rank them as separate languages. According to Georg Solta 1982, there is no significant difference between Dacian and Thracian. Radulescu 1984 accepts that daco mosian possesses a certain degree of dialectal individuality, but argues that there is no fundamental separation between daco mosian and Thracian. Renfrew 1990 argues that there is no doubt that Thracian is related to the Dacian which was spoken in modern-day Romania before that area was occupied by the Romans. However, all these assertions are largely speculative, due to the lack of evidence for both languages. Polamay considers that the evidence presented by Georgiev and Duridanov, although substantial, is not sufficient to determine whether daco mosian and Thracian were two dialects of the same language or two distinct languages. Mosian The ethnonym Mosi was used within the lands alongside the Danube River, in northwestern Thrace. 
As analyzed by some modern scholars, the ancient authors used the name Mosi speculatively to designate tribalians and also Getic and Dacian communities. Topic: <laughs> Illyrian. It is possible that Illyrian, Dacian and Thracian were three dialects of the same language, according to Radulescu. Georgiev 1966, however, considers Illyrian a language closely related to Venetic and Phrygian but with a certain Daco-Mosian admixture. Venetic and Phrygian are considered centum languages, and this may mean that Georgiev, like many other paleolinguists, viewed Illyrian as probably being a centum language with Daco-Mosian admixture. Georgiev proposed that Albanian, a satimized language, developed from Daco-Mosian, a satimized language group, and not from Illyrian. But lack of evidence prevents any firm centum, satim classification for these ancient languages. Renfrew argues that the centum, satim classification is irrelevant in determining relationships between languages. This is because a language may contain both satim and centum features and these, and the balance between them, may change over time. <laughs> Gothic There was a well-established tradition in the 4th century that the Getae, believed to be Dacians by mainstream scholarship, and the Gothi were the same people e.g. Orosius, Getae ili ki et nunc Gothi. This identification, now discredited, was supported by Jacob Grimm. In pursuit of his hypothesis, Grimm proposed many kindred features between the Getae and Germanic tribes. Celtic. Among the Dacian plant names, the only two that can be identified, Propadula and Dyne are purely Celtic, according to Hen. <laughs> Relationship with modern languages <laughs> <laughs> Romanian The mainstream view among scholars is that Daco-Mosian forms the principal linguistic substratum of modern Romanian, a Neo-Latin Romance language, which evolved from Eastern Balkan Romance in the period AD 300–600, according to Georgiev. The possible residual influence of Daco-Mosian on modern Romanian is limited to a modest number of words and a few grammatical peculiarities. According to Georgiev 1981, in Romanian there are about 70 words which have exact correspondences in Albanian, but the phonetic form of these Romanian words is so specific that they cannot be explained as Albanian borrowings. These words belong to the Dacian substratum in Romanian, while their Albanian correspondences were inherited from Daco-Mosian, as in the case of any Romance language, it is argued that Romanian language derived from Vulgar Latin through a series of internal linguistic changes and because of Dacian or Northern Thracian influences on Vulgar Latin in the late Roman era. This influence explains a number of differences between Romanian Thracian substrate, French Celtic substrate, Spanish Basque substratum, Portuguese Celtic substrate. Romanian has no major dialects, perhaps a reflection of its origin in a small mountain region, which was inaccessible but permitted easy internal communication. The history of Romanian is based on speculation because there are virtually no written records of the area from the time of the withdrawal of the Romans around 300 AD until the end of the barbarian invasions around 1300 AD. Many scholars, mostly Romanian, have conducted research into a Dacian linguistic substratum for the modern Romanian language. There is still not enough hard evidence for this. None of the few Dacian words known mainly plant names and none of the Dacian words reconstructed from place names have specific correspondent words in Romanian as opposed to general correspondence in several IE languages. Dex doesn't mention any Dacian etymology, just a number of terms of unknown origin. Most of these are assumed by several scholars to be of Dacian origin, but there is no strong proof that they are. They could, in some cases, also be of pre-Indo-European origin i.e. truly indigenous, from Stone Age Carpathian languages, or, if clearly Indo-European, be of Sarmatian origin, but there's no proof for this either. It seems plausible that a few Dacian words may have survived in the speech of the Carpathian inhabitants through successive changes in the region's predominant languages, Dacian, Celtic to AD 100, Latin, Sarmatian c. 100 to 300, Germanic c. 300 to 500, Slavic, Turkic c. 500 up to the Romanian language when the latter became the predominant language in the region. For some historians, mainly Hungarian, this allegedly didn't occur before the 13th or 14th century, but the hypothesis is highly controversial since it likely is politically motivated. 
Topic: Substratum of Proto-Romanian. The Romanian language has been denoted Daco-Romanian by some scholars because it derives from Late Latin superimposed on a Dacian substratum, and evolved in the Roman colony of Dacia between AD 106 and 275. Modern Romanian may contain 160–170 words of Dacian origin. By comparison, modern French, according to Belay, has approximately 180 words of Celtic origin. The Celtic origin of the French substratum is certain, as the Celtic languages are abundantly documented, whereas the Dacian origin of Romanian words is in most cases speculative. It is also argued that the Dacian language may form the substratum of the Proto Romanian language, which developed from the vulgar Latin spoken in the Balkans north of the Gyrocek line, which roughly divides Latin influence from Greek influence. About 300 words in Eastern Romance languages, Daco Romanian, Aromanian, Megleno Romanian, Istro Romanian, may derive from Dacian, and many of these show a satim reflex. Whether Dacian forms the substratum of Proto Romanian is disputed, yet this theory does not rely only on the Romanization having occurred in Roman Dacia, as Dacian was also spoken in Mosia and northern Dardania. Mosia was conquered by the Romans more than a century before Dacia, and its Latinity is confirmed by Christian sources. The Dacian, Thracian substratum of Romanian is often connected to the words shared between Romanian and Albanian. The correspondences between these languages reflect a common linguistic background. Linguists like Eric Hamp, P. B., P., Hasdeu, I. I. Rusu and many others, see the Romanian language as a completely Romanized Daco-Mosian language, whereas Albanian is a partly Romanized Daco-Mosian language. However, Dacian and Illyrian may have been more similar than most linguists believe, according to Van Antwerp Fine. Topic. Albanian Rusu asserts a Thraco-Dacian origin for the pre-Roman lexical items shared by Albanian and Romanian. He argues that the Albanians descend from the Carpi, which he considers a tribe of free Dacians. By rejecting the thesis of Illyrian Albanian identification, Georgiev concludes that the Albanians originated in modern day Romania or Serbia and that their language developed during the 4th to 6th centuries, when Proto Romanian appeared. Georgiev further suggested that Daco Mosian is the ancestor of modern Albanian, based on the phonologies of the two languages. Based on certain marked lexical and grammatical affinities between Albanian and Romanian, he also suggested Proto-Albanian speakers migrated from Dardania into the region where Albanian is spoken today. However, this theory is rejected by most Albanian linguists, who consider Albanian a direct descendant of ancient Illyrian. Polime supports this view on balance, but considers the evidence inconclusive. Other linguists argue that Albanian is a direct descendant of the language of the Besi, a Thracian tribe that lived in the Rodopi Mountains. Many authors in general terms consider that Thraco-Illyrian branch including Dacian survived in a form of Albanian language. <laughs> <laughs> Baltic languages There is significant evidence of at least a long-term proximity link, and possibly a genetic link, between Dacian and the modern Baltic languages. The Bulgarian linguist Ivan Duridanov, in his first publication claimed that Thracian and Dacian are genetically linked to the Baltic languages and in the next one he made the following classification. The Thracian language formed a close group with the Baltic resp. Balto-Slavic, the Dacian and the Pelasgian languages. More distant were its relations with the other Indo-European languages, and especially with Greek, the Italic and Celtic languages, which exhibit only isolated phonetic similarities with Thracian, the Tokarian and the Hittite were also distant." Quote, Duridanov's cognates of the reconstructed Dacian words are found mostly in the Baltic languages, followed by Albanian without considering Thracian. Parallels have enabled linguists, using the techniques of comparative linguistics, to decipher the meanings of several Dacian and Thracian placenames with, they claim, a high degree of probability. Of 74 Dacian placenames attested in primary sources and considered by Duridanov, a total of 62 have Baltic cognates, most of which were rated certain by Duridanov. Polime considers that these parallels are unlikely to be coincidence. Duridanov's explanation is that Proto-Dacian and Proto-Thracian speakers were in close geographical proximity with Proto-Baltic speakers for a prolonged period, perhaps during the period 3000-2000 BC. 
A number of scholars such as the Russian top O. Rav have pointed to the many close parallels between Dacian and Thracian placenames and those of the Baltic language zone, Lithuania, Latvia and in East Prussia where an extinct but well-documented Baltic language, Old Prussian, was spoken until it was displaced by German during the Middle Ages. After creating a list of names of rivers and personal names with a high number of parallels, the Romanian linguist Mircea M. Radulescu classified the daco mosian and Thracian as Baltic languages of the south and also proposed such classification for Illyrian. The German linguist Schall also attributed a Southern Baltic classification to Dacian. The American linguist Harvey Mayer refers to both Dacian and Thracian as Baltic languages. He claims to have sufficient evidence for classifying them as Baltoidic or at least Baltic-like, if not exactly, Baltic dialects or languages and classifies Dacians and Thracians as Balts by extension. According to him, Albanian, the descendant of Illyrian, escaped any heavy Baltic influence of Daco-Thracian. Mayer claims that he extracted an unambiguous evidence for regarding Dacian and Thracian as more tied to Lithuanian than to Latvian. The Czech archaeologist Christian Turnvold classified Dacian as Danubian Baltic. The Venezuelan Lithuanian historian Jurat de Rosales classifies Dacian and Thracian as Baltic languages. It appears from the study of hydronyms river and lake names that Baltic languages once predominated much farther eastwards and southwards than their modern confinement to the southeastern shores of the Baltic Sea, and included regions that later became predominantly Slavic-speaking. The zone of Baltic hydronyms extends along the Baltic coast from the mouth of the Oder as far as Riga, eastwards as far as the line Yaroslavl Moscow Kursk, and southwards as far as the line Oder mouth Warsaw Kiev Kursk. It thus includes much of northern and eastern Poland, Belarus, and Central European Russia. 4. Fig. 2. <laughs> Fringe theories Another theory maintains that the Dacians spoke a language akin to Latin and that the people who settled in the Italian peninsula shared the same ancestors. The Romanian philologist Nicolae Densicianu argued in his book Dacia Prehistorica Prehistoric Dacia, published in 1913, that Latin and Dacian were the same language or were mutually intelligible. His work was considered by mainstream linguists to be pseudoscience. It was reprinted under the regime of Nicolae Ceaușescu. The first article to revive Densuzianu's theory was an unsigned paper, The Beginnings of the History of the Romanian People, included in Anal de Istori, a journal published by the Romanian Communist Party's Institute of Historical and Social Political Studies. The article claimed that the Thracian language was a pre-Romance or Latin language. Arguments used in the article include for instance the absence of interpreters between the Dacians and the Romans, as depicted on the bas-reliefs of Trajan's column. The bibliography mentions, apart from Densicianu, the work of French academician Louis Armand, an engineer who allegedly showed that the Thraco-Dacians spoke a pre-Romance language. Similar arguments are found in Iosif Constantine Dragon's We, the Thracians 1976. About the same time Ion Horatia Crisson wrote, Burabista and his age, 1975. Nevertheless, the theory didn't rise to official status under Ceausescu's rule. Opinions about a hypothetical Latinity of Dacian can be found in earlier authors, Sextus Rufus Breviarum C8, C.F. Bocking Not, Dean. 2, 6, Ovid Trist. 2, 188-189 and Horace Odes, I, 20. Iosif Constantine Dragan and the New York City-based physician Napoleon Savescu continued to support this theory and published a book entitled We Are Not Rome's Descendants. They also published a magazine called Noi, Daci, Us Dacians, and organized a yearly International Congress of Decology. Topic: The fate of Dacian. From the earliest times that they are attested, Dacians lived on both sides of Danube and on both sides of the Carpathians, evidenced by the northern Dacian town Setidava. It is unclear exactly when the Dacian language became extinct, or whether it has a living descendant. The first Roman conquest of part of Dacia did not extinguish the language, as free Dacian tribes may have continued to speak Dacian in the area northeast of the Carpathians as late as the 6th or 7th century AD. According to one hypothesis, a branch of Dacian continued as the Albanian language 1901. 
Another hypothesis Marius considers Albanian to be a daco mosian dialect that split off from Dacian before 300 BC and that Dacian itself became extinct. However, mainstream scholarship considers Albanian to be a descendant of the Illyrian language and not a dialect of Dacian. In this scenario, Albanian, Romanian cognates are either daco mosian loanwords acquired by Albanian, or, more likely, Illyrian loanwords acquired by Romanian. The argument for a split before 300 BC is that inherited Albanian words, e.g., alb motor, sister, alb, o, but all the Latin loans in Albanian having an a, show Latin, a, greater than alb a. This indicates that the transformation PALB, a, greater than PALB, O, happened and ended before the Roman arrival in the Balkans. However, Romanian substratum words shared with Albanian show a Romanian, a, that corresponds to an Albanian, O, when the source of both sounds is an original common, a, mazer, modhul PALB, O, had not yet begun. The correlation between these two theories indicates that the hypothetical split between the pre-Roman Dacians, who were later Romanized, and Proto-Albanian happened before the Romans arrived in the Balkans. Topic extinction According to Georgiev, daco mosian was replaced by Latin as the everyday language in some parts of the two Moji during the Roman imperial era, but in others, for instance Dardania in modern-day southern Serbia and the northern Macedonian Republic, daco mosian remained dominant, although heavily influenced by Eastern Balkan Latin. The language may have survived in remote areas until the 6th century. Thracian, also supplanted by Latin, and by Greek in its southern zone, is documented as a living language in approximately 500 AD. See also List of Romanian words of possible Dacian origin List of Dacian names List of Dacian plant names List of reconstructed Dacian words List of Dacian towns List of Dacian kings Megleno-Romanian language Thracian language Thraco-Roman Paleo-Balkan languages Phrygian language Scythian languages Sinai lead plates Divi List of ancient cities in Thrace and Dacia Notes Topic References Topic Ancient Topic Modern Topic Further reading Topic External links Evidence for an Italic Substratum of Romanian, by Keith Andrew Massey